First, I think it's really important to go just through the three basics, airway, breathing, and circulation. If you can remember your ABCs, you can remember these three. And we'll start with airway. Airway stands for, can they get air into their lungs? Is there a blockage either in their mouth, their throat, or their nose? If they have a blockage in their airway or their throat, we would need to do some form of removal of the object. And that can be done through back blows and chest thrusts, as we can show you in an actual performance video. If it's not really in the, the airway, it might be just a, a light obstruction of mucus or some type of burp up, or maybe even some, some congestion in their nose or in the back of their throat. And there's a really easy way to clear that out. And we call that a bulb syringe. It's my best friend when we have new babies. And there's two different types. One has a long stem and one has a really short, kind of a more roundish, uh, oblong shaped. I actually preferred the one with the oblong shape because I was always afraid I was going up too high with the one that was skinnier and longer. Um, you can pick those up at most grocery stores, uh, drug stores, or baby stores. But when you use that bulb syringe, there's a couple tricks that I'd like to share with you. And this is very common. You'll have this for a long time, and it's not usually an emergency, but it's a great tip for clearing out that, just that hard to deal with congestion. You wanna squeeze the bulb syringe first, and then put the, the little end up into the nair of the baby's nose. Now, one thing that people forget to do is block the other side. And so, a lot of times, when I would do that, and I'd let go of the bulb syringe, the air would just go up one side and out the other, and I couldn't get anything out of their nose. So one trick that I found was once you squeeze the bulb and put it up to the nostril, push on the other side, and then let go of that bulb. And you might have to do it several times, but you can start to create some suction and actually pull a lot of congestion out of their nose, especially if they're dealing with a little cold or maybe just a little sinus but getting that out really, really helps them be able to eat better because now they're not suffocating. It's not really suffocating, but they're having some problem breathing when they're breastfeeding or when they're drinking a bottle. And so a lot of times it'll interrupt their ability to eat well, which is what they need because they can't breathe through their nose. So cleaning that congestion out of their nose, though not life-threatening, is a great tip to help. The second is a more serious issue, and that's breathing problems. Breathing problems means they can't really exchange oxygen well. Some of the things to look for is really labored breathing. Fast, and babies breathe fast anyways, but breathing hard, using retractory type muscle, accessory muscles, making the ribs look like they're, they're really working hard and retracting. So take the little onesie down and look at their lungs. If you see those accessory muscles pulling in, if you see the little sternum sinking in, see the abdomen and, and the whole abdominal muscle region, that diaphragm really working to try to pull air in, most likely there is an obstruction of some sort in their lungs, whether that be an infection, whether that be maybe something that has gotten into their lungs, but either way, we need to get this baby into emergency as soon as possible. If that baby's working hard to breathe and they're really laboring, and they don't look like they're able to actually recover, maybe they've even got some circomoral cyanosis, that's a blue color around the lips, around the mouth, and in the fingernail beds, that is a respiratory emergency and we're gonna call 911 right away, no matter what. And even if you called them and it was not an emergency, it's better to rule it out than to error and have had to really actually call 911 but didn't do it in time. See, the thing that we need to realize is babies, unless they have a congenital heart defect, they only really go into cardiac arrest for the most part because of respiratory problems. So if we control their breathing and their airway, in most cases, they won't go into cardiac arrest. But because they're so small and they need oxygen and they need to exchange that carbon dioxide and they can really, really run into problems fast, boy, if we don't take care of the airway and the breathing, then we will end up with a child in cardiac arrest. If that happens, we need to begin CPR right away, activate 911, and keep doing CPR. And we've got a video that we're gonna make sure you're able to watch that teaches you exactly how to do that. But one of the things you need to remember is to not fear 
that you're going to make their condition worse. If that baby is unconscious, not breathing, not moving, and they're turning blue, they need CPR. CPR is not gonna make their condition worse even if they have a pulse, but you couldn't feel it. So do the CPR as taught in the video after calling 911 and you will give that baby the most, most, most awesome chance at surviving this episode. And if they don't survive, it will not be because you failed. In fact, just the opposite. If there was a chance of survival to be had, you gave them that chance. So be confident in that. You can't kill a person with CPR, but CPR can give them a second chance at life. I know that's a heavy topic, but it's really important. 